All right, guys, let's get started and uh, let's talk about what's going to happen with the S&P 500 over the next day. And uh, we have big events happening this week with the CPI data coming out and uh, Jerome Powell statements today, uh, what they did. And we'll go over those topics and, uh, you know, prepare for the week. Uh, so before we begin, just a humble request, please like and subscribe to my channel. It does help us out a lot, uh, you know, uh, over the long term uh, so we can continue to make content for you guys. So looking at the S&P 500, uh, so far it's just a choppy day, but I wanted to highlight this chart and what's been happening on the daily time frame. If we look at this, this is a period of consolidation. After a period of consolidation, we had a breakout, a nice rejection, uh, which everyone was panicking about, and now a nice inside day in trading, right? So what I'm thinking is here, uh, if CPI data comes lower than expected, which is what's being forecasted right now uh, with uh, JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, all coming out with statements, very possible that market could already price this in. However, this is what we're looking for as traders. We're looking for a break of at least uh, 393 and then 395 when that breaks first target is going to be this gap fill around 400 right then above this we got uh, 405 then above that we got 410 that would be the play and that would be the way to go right so that would make a lot of sense for us to just keep an eye and keep these levels in front of us and if we do break this level right here which is the 405 on the daily that gives us an important indicator we break the downtrend then if we break the drawn trend then what we want to see is we want to see a period of consolidation but for now let's just keep an eye on that and let's see how that does over the coming few days here and we'll continue to monitor that the only other thing i want to point out is on this side right here where i have my uh, you know list the the 10 year the 20 year and the two year and the five year the yields they're also on the rise that's something we want to pay attention to the two years also on the rise the five years on the rise the 10 and the 20 are also on the rise we want to be mindful of that and we do not want to ignore these these uh, areas so let's look at the triple q next the triple q uh, you know, same concept here. We had nice consolidation, then a breakout, a nice pullback here. Now, if we get some nice CPI data, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, lower than expected. So what most people are expecting, that means that gives a Fed some sort of indication that their policies have been working and the chances of interest rate hikes, you know, uh, start to decrease on the horizon and lower interest rates or interest rate pauses does help out the tech sector. But I do wanna mention in this video that earnings are gonna be an important part uh, of this month, right? So if we look at this on the triple Qs, we have a huge resistance level or selling pressure right about here at 278. So if first we wanna see is a nice break at about 275, you get a nice three point move. And then if we can break above this level, which is 282, we then we want to wait for a pullback and see what happens the downtrend is a lot further for the Qs than it is for the s p 500 so that's something else you want to keep in mind so the Qs have been hurt really bad so if we can get above 295 this is going to be the sweet spot or something that we want to you know keep mind of because if we can get above this level there's very possible that we can go all the way to 306 and 314 all right guys uh looking at iwm iwm is another catalyst uh that is looking to break out you know out of this pattern uh iwm i would only trade if it breaks above the 182 level to 187. that's what i want to break i, I want to trade that i believe is a high probability trade for me if i look at the daily time frame it breaks a huge downtrend line uh, right about here then we get a nice push then we want to see a pullback breakouts alone are not enough you need to have a pullback that means buyers need to re come back in and hold that position to confirm that that is the new support level we have to continue to watch for that but right now first we want to get the breakout then wait for the pullback and if the pullback holds that's where we want to enter the other uh what we also want to watch is dow jones dow jones i've been mentioning for quite some time here dow jones had this nice rally up and then a pullback consolidation and now we're looking to break out the dow is a great trade if it if it can get above 343 all the way to 350 that would be a nice trade on dow 
once that fails, then Dow is back in this big, big consolidation that it's had going on for some time. And that is something important that we'll have to watch for as Dow will be the index that will be back into its uh, break even or positive category or consolidation category, uh, you know, compared to all the other indexes. All right, guys. So now the next thing we want to keep an eye on is gold. Gold is still breaking out with the market. So that's something interesting to watch. And if gold can break out of this uh, level right here, 175, we can easily get to 180 and we can break above that interesting is that gold is moving with the market that is something very very interesting to note uh, looking at vix here vix is breaking down quite nicely but still not to the level where i want to see it okay uh, if i look at the chart on the vix right here for me it needs to break below uh, one, uh, 18 uh, then get to 14 here and then i'm more confident that you know what the fear is coming out of the market and we're gonna possibly start to move towards recovery um, you know and that would be a huge indication for me that okay uh, you know this is a good time to re-enter and uh, take some long long positions uh the other thing i want to point out is here guys so there's all these sectors that we have on the s p 500 the sectors are very interesting because right now today the only sector that is red is utility every other sector is either break even or it's green so I have this theory that when all the sectors are green or when they're all pretty much red I err on the side of caution because there is something that is not normal about that typical uh, typically you would have a sector rotation happening and that would give us a strong indication that the market is functioning normally but when every single sector is up that means there is something uh, you know, going on that certain sector is profit taking and certain sector shorts are covering. Uh, there's different things that are going on. So we have to be mindful of that. So just be careful as you trade. And if you guys enjoyed the video, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel.